Chris Truth Channel. Thank you for coming to Seas Truth Channel. Today's title is called Lilith and the War in Heaven. I want to start with what I found in Wikipedia. And I'm just going to kind of do an overview of this. You can pause it and read it if you'd like. But Lilith is often envisioned as a dangerous demon of the night who was sexually wanton and who steals babies in the darkness. Lilith appears as Adam's first wife who was created at the same time and from the same dirt as Adam. This is in Genesis 1.27. Lilith left Adam after she refused to become subservient to him and then would not return to the Garden of Eden after she had coupled with the archangel Samael. Samael means blind God. Lilith, translated as night creatures, night monster, night hag, or screech owl, first occurs in a list of animals in Isaiah 34, 14. So that's where we're going to start is in Isaiah 34 and what this is describing is the events that took place during the war in heaven and Lilith is a direct cause and a huge part of all of this so let's start at Isaiah 34, verse 1. Come near, ye nations, to hear and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord Yahweh is upon all nations, and his fury and his wrath upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them, he hath delivered them to the slaughter. So this is right at the time of the war in heaven, when Michael and the dragon fought. The Lord Yahweh is making his plan known. And I would also like to point out that all the words you see highlighted in blue are the Strong's Concordance translation of the previous word. So let's start at verse 3. Their slain, being their hosts, also shall be cast out, and their stink, being their cisterns, their water, or their spirit, shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood, being their life blood. Their hosts will be cast out and their spirit will come up out of the carcass. Verse 4. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, which means to wage war. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. I have a couple of videos referencing to the parable of the fig tree. You might be interested in watching those. But what this is saying is all of the hosts of heaven, be it angels, judges, rulers, whatever you want to call them, they're going to wage war. The heavens will be rolled as a scroll. And all the hosts in heaven will fall down to the earth. Whenever you translate the word pula, it is leaf. Christ speaks of the leaves falling off the fig tree before the harvest. Well, a pula represents an abundance of chariots and wheels in the Sumerian translation. So, whenever you reference to the parable of the fig tree, this is basically when the wheels and chariots will be falling out of the sky just as it did at the time of this war in heaven. 
We're going to see this again in the future. Verse 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idema and upon the people of my curse. Yahweh's curse is destruction, devotion, and ban. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. Verse 6. The sword of the Lord Yahweh is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness, and with the blood of the lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of the rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Idema. So, I want to read this with the translations. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made anointed with marrow and with the blood of captains and leaders and with the fat of the kidneys being the mind or inner being of the mighty men. This is talking about the Genesis 127 creation of man. This is also talking about what took place in heaven whenever Christ was king over the Elohim. The Lord Yahweh filled his sword with marrow, bone marrow. So the Lord's sword is filled with marrow and the minds and inner beings of mighty men. Verse 7, And the unicorns shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, being the princes and the warriors. And their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust, being their ashes, will be made fat with marrow. So the dust, being Adam's dust, shall be made fat with marrow. Because if you remember in Genesis 2, 7, Adam was made out of the dust. Well, he was made out of the dust because the dust contained the marrow of the captains, the leaders, of the mighty men, and contain the essence of Christ. Verse 8, For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. In translation, For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of making an end for the strife on the holy mountain. So the Lord seeks vengeance and he wants to make a full end, just as he states in other verses. And he wants to make a full end because of the conflict that took place in the holy mountain, which is the dwelling place of the Elohim. The Lord is doing this because of the division made whenever Christ came down in Genesis 1, verses 3 and 4. He wants to make a full end of mankind or the children of Christ through testing them, through blinding them. The Father does not tempt any man to do evil, nor is he tempted ever to do evil by man. Verse 9, And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone. And the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night or day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Verse 11. But the cumarant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. In translation, but the Christ, who is also the pelican, because a pelican will pierce its own breast to give its children blood to eat. So, but the Christ and the rolled up this is speaking of the fallen hosts of heaven, Michael and his angels, shall inherit the land. The dawn and the dusk shall dwell in it, and the anointed cherub that covers, who is also the anointed cherub that stretches, 
shall stretch a cord of confusion, which is a cord of unreality and futile things. And he shall place in it the stones of emptiness. Do you remember when Christ spoke of the stones the builder rejected? This is Lord Yahweh who is giving the stones of emptiness. Why? Because Lord Yahweh rejects the cornerstone. The Christ and the angels that fell, being Michael and his angels, shall inherit the land that is being destroyed by Yahweh. The night and day shall dwell in it. And the cherub that covers or stretches will cause a false reality of futile things and cornerstones of emptiness, representing the, cor- the stone that the builders rejected. Verse 12. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes, being the chiefs, the rulers, the captains, and the princes, shall be nothing, which means they shall disappear and be non-existent. So if you remember up here, it talked about the lambs, the goats, the rams, and I told you that that meant captains, mighty men, leaders. Well, it confirms it down here. And all her chiefs, rulers, captains, and princes shall be nothing, meaning they will disappear, they will be non-existent. And the thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles, and the fortresses thereof. And it shall be a habitations of dragons and a court for owls. Verse 14. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. And the satyr, being the devil, shall cry to his companion. The screech owl, being Lilith, also shall rest there and find herself a place of rest. So real quick, I would like to remind people of Revelation 12. The woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, travailing in pain to give birth. Once she gave birth, her child was caught up unto Elohim. And she escaped to a place prepared by Elohim. Well, this screech owl is that woman. Lilith is that woman. She was given a place to rest by the Elohim. The devil shall scream to his companion, and Lilith shall also find rest. Revelation 12, woman, And this verse are confirmations that Lilith is the Revelation 12 woman. Verse 15. There shall the great owl, being the tree snake, make her nest and give birth and hatch, which means to cleave together under the protection of the shelter. There shall the falcons, or the vultures, which means the gods like Ra from Egypt, also be gathered, everyone with her mate. So the tree snake is the great owl. The screech owl is Lilith. Do you remember the serpent in the tree that deceived Eve? Well, I think there's a huge connection here which I'll explain later the tree snake being Lilith will give birth and cleave together under the protection of the enclosure under the protection of the garden there shall the vultures the Elohim from Egypt also be gathered and everyone with her mate so Is it possible that all of these Elohim, like Ra from Egypt, mate with her? And maybe that's where we get different races of people from? I don't know. Verse 16. Seek ye out the book of the Lord, and read. No one of these shall fail. 
None shall want her mate. This is speaking of Adam. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. So none shall want the man, the Adam of 127, whom contains the light. For Yahweh's mouth commanded it and has brought him together, just like the anointed cherub that covers, who brings together. And Yahweh, he shall cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by cord, or the DNA strand, and they shall possess it forever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. So the Lord Yahweh has cast destruction for them and has divided destiny, or small stones representing the stones of fire. The Lord Yahweh is explaining exactly what took place during the Great War and explains what his plan is to bring about his full end of mankind and all the Elohim that was cast down with him along with the children of Lilith. Yahweh tries to make himself look better than all those angels who fought against the dragon and he slays them. The woman Lilith is the companion of Yahweh until she is brought back to the Christ. Which we're going to review this in another video. That is in Hosea 1, chapter 1 through chapter 4. But she was the harlot, sex-seeking, baby-having snake that will return to her husband, and he will forgive her. She contains the knowledge of good and evil because she was with Christ and committed adultery with the devil. She is the harlot riding the beast, with knowledge of both good and evil. Yahweh created enmity between Lilith's seed of Adam's and Eve's hybrid seed of angel and man cleaved together, which is represented by the two serpents on a pole, which is also on the side of your ambulances. Yahweh was the father of Cain and Abel, making them hybrids. Eve stated, The Lord has given me a man in Genesis, and it was not in the image of Adam, because Adam was not wanted, just like it says up here in Isaiah 16. None shall want her mate, because Yahweh commanded it. So in quick review, the Lord Yahweh right before the war in heaven, claimed he was going to bring destruction and wrath upon all the armies and destroy them all and deliver them to the slaughter. He slain the hosts of heaven, and they were cast out, and their spirits come up out of their dead bodies. And all the hosts of heaven waged war, and the heavens were rolled together as a scroll. And all the hosts will fall down. For the sword of the Lord Yahweh is filled with fatness and bone marrow of the captains, the leaders, filled with the mind and the inner being of the mighty men. And the princes and the warriors, his sword shall be made fat with the dust, with their marrow. And it is the Lord's vengeance and the Lord's making an end for the strife on the holy mountain. But the Christ and the fallen, the hosts of heaven, shall inherit the land. The night and the morning shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch upon it a cord of confusion, of unreality and futile things. And he will reject the cornerstone, giving us stones of emptiness. The nobles, the chiefs, the rulers, the captains, the princes shall be non-existent because they disappeared. The satyr, being the devil, will cry unto his companion who is Lilith, the screech owl, 
and she shall rest there. And there will she rest. The tree snake, being the serpent, will make her nest. She will give birth. She will cleave together under the protection of the garden. And there also will be the other Elohim. I really hope you can find the connections that's going on in this. And I'm going to do more videos on this subject. I think this covers enough for now. But is this not amazing in your eyes? I never thought Lilith was in the Bible. And look, she's right here. So I thank you for watching. I ask you to please like, share, and subscribe. And I hope you have a great day.